you're listening to Kate Palmer for SparkleTart.com and today I'm going to show you a silvery wintry journal page using my products from Lindy's Stamp Gang. To begin this page you'll need an assortment of flat embellishments. So I have some paper doilies, some lace from my mum's sewing kit, uh, a few little bits and bobs and I'm just cutting it all to size and playing with the arrangement on the paper. The next step is to use some mixed media adhesive or matte medium and glue all of these items onto the page. Now I make sure to add glue on the top and the bottom so that they're really well stuck. Once the matte medium is dry, add gesso over the entire page, embellishments and all. You need just one surface to work on. If you've got uh, paper and fabric and bits of matte medium, the colour won't take as evenly. So coat the whole thing. I'm then squishing the pages together, I'm pulling them apart, and this will give a little bit of extra texture. And it looks a little bit like this, just a bit more interesting. Now we get to have a bit of fun. Grab some gelatos. I've got snow cone, aqua dolce, earl grey and squid ink. All I'm really doing is scribbling these over the background just to fill in the white space. Once you've got the white space covered, grab some water in a spritz bottle and just spritz over the gelatos. Then I'm using a paintbrush to activate the colours and spread the gelatos like paint to create a painted background. If at any point it begets, begins to get a little dry, just spritz on a little bit more water. Now because I've used these over gesso, they take a little bit longer to dry than they would on paper, but it also means that you can spritz with a bit more water over the top to get some really cool patterns, which is what I've done. To add a little extra interest, I'm using some golden medium and a stencil. Now the medium that I'm using is the light molding paste and I'm just scraping this through the stencil and then scraping a little bit off so it looks a bit scruffy. I'm also adding a little bit around the edges just to sort of help frame the page. For a little extra bling I'm adding some of the Platinum Crackle Texture Paste just to the lower half of the journal page and again I'm applying this so it looks a bit scruffy. Now that all of my base layers are dry, I've got some really interesting textures to work over when I add colour to the journal page. Now it's time for some starbursts. I'm starting off my page by adding down at the rabbit hole. And this is a pretty soft brown in the starburst series. So give it a good shake and just spritz this on randomly over the background. Then using a heat gun, dry it off. You want to use the heat gun so that you get little splatters and splodges. If you leave it to air dry, it'll sort of spread out a little bit and you won't get those individual spots. You can see that this has created a very light, pale background. So what I'm going to add over the top is Gag Me With A Spoon Grey. Now this is another pale colour, but it'll give a really beautiful base for the background. Again, dry with the heat gun. I'm going to dry with a heat gun between each colour so I get separate colours and no colour blending. Now for a hint of Delphinium Turquoise. This is a much stronger colour. I'm going to spray this in sort of splotches so it sinks into some of the texture. This will help highlight the texture later and give the page a little bit more interest. On to one of my darkest colours which in this case is Time Travel Teal. Now again, I'm going to add this in blotches so I get those wonderful watermarks and sort of some staining. I'm going to go quite heavy with this one just to add a little bit more colour to the page. Again, once you've sprayed it on, grab the heat gun and dry it off. You really don't want this running into the centre of the page and seeping through the binding. It's at this point I've decided to be bold, take a risk and add some Midnight Rendezvous Raven without drying off the turquoise. This could turn into a muddy mess or it could go the other way and look gorgeous. Now you may have noticed an extra colour creeping in at places. I'm using Silent Night Silver instead of water to move the colours around on the page if I think any particular area is looking too dark. If I use plain water it'll dilute the colour but if I use Silent Night Silver it'll just sort of move it and mute the colour rather than making it too pale. Now that you've finished the final colour 
dry with the heat gun and make sure it is completely dry before the next step. I've grabbed this Deer stencil. This one's from Donna Downey and I'm going to use it with black gesso to create a silhouette. Now you need to make sure that you're holding this stencil down really well so that none of the paint seeps underneath the edges, but you can do it. Just go slowly and make sure that you're moving the brush from the stencil out onto the page, not the other way around. That'll keep the stenciled image nice and clean. Once you've finished with that, fill in any bits with the black gesso so that the stenciled image really stands out. I'm also using the black gesso and dry brushing it onto the texture of the page to help sort of draw the eye to the deer. All I'm doing is dragging this almost dry brush just over the surface and it really helps highlight the texture and the deer. Now I'm going to use the same black gesso in this next step but I'll be using it to create the image rather than the outline. I'm just going through a text stencil and again quite carefully with an almost dry brush just adding the very fine text just to sort of help separate one side from the other. Now you need to completely let this dry and then you're ready to finish it off. Now after sitting here staring at my page for a little while wondering what else it needed I finally decided I liked it just the way it was. So I've decided to leave it like this, a little bit dramatic, a little bit silvery, kind of moonlightish, and all I'm going to do is add a hint of eyes to the deer, just to give your eye something to focus on. But really, with that sort of little element of text, the beautiful texture, the colour from the lindies, the sparkle and the shimmer, I don't think it needed anything else really. So I'll give you a look at a few close-up images to finish. But this is my finished in the moonlight silvery journal page made with starbursts from Lindy's stamp gang. You might notice I have added one tiny extra detail. It's up in that top right corner. You can see it now. I just couldn't resist. The minute I saw that embellishment, I knew I had to use it. I hope I'm not the only one who gets the joke. Hope you've enjoyed this clip and I'll be back next month with more.